Thank you to the candidates that have joined the Web 3 Athon, the Hackathon, uh, and chose to build on XDC. So last week, we had a fundamentals on integrating XDC uh, with Quincy and myself, Jonathan. And this week, we welcome our ecosystem partner, Civic, to provide a live demo on how to integrate identity and uniqueness into smart contracts and deploy on XDC. So with that said, I'll hand the mic over to Dan uh, to introduce himself and his team. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, I'm Dan and my colleague, Kevin, we're both from Civic hey. and we bring identity to Web3. We're very pleased to be here today to talk to you and uh, thanks very much, XDC, for the invitation. Um, so I've got a few slides I'll run through first, um, but I won't take too long on them because I really want to get my hands dirty today and start building with you guys. Um, so what I'm, we're going to do in this in this hour workshop, I'm first going to spend a little bit of time in explaining what Civic is, what we do, what identity is on Web3. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the hackathon prize um, that we're doing in conjunction with XDC and what you would need to uh, to, to do to uh, to win a prize there. And then we're going to start coding. Um, so I'd love it if you joined in with that part. Um, you need relatively few thing prerequisites, Node and Yarn set up, uh, MetaMask uh, connected to XDC app with them. If you've got that set up, in, um, if you don't have that already set up, um, set it up in the meantime. I don't have a link to the docs for that, um, but uh, I think you can probably search for it. Um, this is a QR code pointing to the repo that I'll be using. Um, now, once you check this out, you'll have the entire solution to the whole thing. Um, so don't cheat and just check it out and and uh, and have it ready. But um, uh, we'll walk through it. There are three steps to it. Each step is a commit. So um, we'll go stepwise through it. Um, OK, cool. So Civic, what is it? Well, effectively, essentially, it's decentralized identity. What is decentralized identity? Well, the best way to describe it is to compare it with traditional identity, um, which comes in the following forms. So we have things like traditional login. Everyone knows about that password based login. Most recent, um, mostly now replaced with at least in part with things like um, login with Google and Facebook. Federated identity is what we call that. Um, then there's traditional KYC, which stands for know your customer where you have to uh, go through a, usually a lengthy process of scanning your documents and scanning your face and that, that data gets sent to, a, to the third party that you're integrating with. Um, there are issues with that in terms of um, real trustworthiness of that third party, the reusability of that KYC information. You can't, you have to go through KYC several times for multiple um, third parties, for example. And then things like traditional profiles um, and uh, social network, social graphs, they're all data that you provide about your identity, about your friend, um, the friend network and so on, but they're owned by a third party. It's not owned by you. And we all know that these, these organizations mine information and mine your attention for advertising and so on. Um, and it's kind of, there's a certain amount of lock-in, right? It's not possible to transfer your social graph from one of these platforms to another. And there's also a large amount of surveillance and tracking that goes along there. Um, decentralized identity or Web3 identity kind of stands in counterpoint to a lot of those trends. Um, so in, in the login sense, you will have things like sign in with your wallet. Um, and decentralized KYC is the data is stored by you and you choose who to give it to. You choose and, and basically you can reuse it. And then decentralized profiles and, um, and social networks. This is something that's been a very tough nut to crack and nobody's really cracked it yet, but the principles are there and the idea that your data is owned by you, your social graph is owned by you, it's portable, you control it, you choose, you decide whether it can be deleted or not, who receives it. And it's all typically based around this concept called decentralized identifiers, which I won't go into too much here, but um, if anyone's interested in the topic of decentralized identity, Decentralized identifiers is a very good place to start. Um, Civic effectively does um, some or lots of all of those different things, and here's a list of the sort of use cases that we that we um, that we provide. I'm going to run through them really quickly, but you don't. There's no test. You don't have to remember these. Um, we're going to actually be doing a few of them in real life now in a few moments in the workshop. Um, so first off, the things like smart contract access control. Remember that one, because we're going to be doing that one. 
um, regulation and compliance, bot resistance, civil attack resistance. Civil attacks are when one person pretends to be multiple people in order to uh, in order to gain some advantage. Similar but not the same as bots. Um, KYC, we do that. Uh, Web3 profile management, um, credential storage and reuse, Web3 login, key management, cross-chain identity. We do some or a lot of all of those different things. And to make it easier to understand what we do, we kind of put, bucket those into two categories, essentially. The first the first bunch relating to access control, regulation, and so, and so on, you all get bundled into something called Civic Pass. And then the other bunch loosely get bundled into the uh, website called civic.me. Um, we're going to be focusing on Civic Pass right now. Not all of Civic.me is available on all, all on all chains, but this uh, but Civic Pass is available on XDC, and everything you see here will be X, XDC based. Um, so yeah, Civic Pass you can consider Web3 access control, Civic.me, Web3 profile, and identity management. Okay, um, I'm going to whistle through these. I think we'll probably send this out. Um, later so th these are the places you need to go if you want to uh, look into how to integrate these are the libraries um, and these are the resources docs.civic.com is the most important one that's the one you should open right now because that will really help you uh, follow along with the workshop but the discord as well you can go to civic.com and find that link as well um, this is a good place to come and ask for help so if we uh, run through things a little bit too fast in this call or if we if you just have general questions about any of the things in that long list that I sent earlier uh, that I went through earlier, then um, that is the place to uh, to ask about that. And please follow us on Twitter and you'll get all the alpha when we release cool new stuff. OK, on to the next step. The hackathon prize from XDC is um, nice and generous. Up to 10,000 USDC is up for grabs. And you may only apply for one prize, and there are constraints on the on um, on what you what sort of prizes you can win based on what you submit. Um, if you want to go for one of the bigger prizes, two thousand, then we would like to see both smart contract and front end integration of Civic SDKs. If it's front end only, then there'll be a smaller prize of five hundred available. Um, also cool, but the good news is. Um, we're going to be doing the whole the whole kit and caboodle in this presentation now. So we're going to be going through both smart contract and front end integration um, uh, in a in a sample app. So you, if you follow through this workshop um, and you build something similar, then you're eligible for that that big prize. Um, and here's another couple of suggestions to uh, to to kind of get you thinking about how to integrate. Um, we have different types of Civic Pass. We're going to be using in this demo the one called Uniqueness Pass. Um, and the Uniqueness Pass specifically helps prevent against Sybil attacks because the Uniqueness Pass is something that you, it's kind of a biometric pass. You'll see it in action soon enough. But basically you go through a face scan and that face scan is registered against one single wallet. So only one wallet can, um, can have a pass, a Uniqueness Pass. And that means that if you try to then get a uniqueness pass on another wallet and you use your same face, then uh, you will be denied. And that's basically going to be a huge part of this um, presentation that we do. But there are other flavors um, and the flavors are um, all listed in the docs. And one other one, a very simple one is a capture. And this is basically making sure that there's a human on the other end of the line. It doesn't prevent against civil attacks, but it prevents against bots. So you might want to integrate Civic Pass Capture to prevent botting during a mint or something like that. And the good news is almost it's, it will be pretty much exactly the same. So if you follow through this workflow, we're going to be using the uniqueness pass, but you could use exactly the same, do exactly the same integration to use the capture pass or the different passes that are available. And finally, um, the requirements to win any prize that must be using Civic Pass must be on XDC, and it must be functionally working with an MVP. So um, slides or a GitHub, nice, um, but we want to see it actually in action. Um, but definitely, please also send the, the GitHub repo because we want to see the code if possible. OK, um, so what are we going to build? Um, we're going to build a simple lottery DAP. So in this lottery, there's an administrator that creates a lottery. 
and fund it. So the tickets are actually free. The participants get free tickets, but we're going to use Civic to make sure that you only get one ticket per person. Because obviously, if you have a free lottery on chain, then um, bots would just completely spam it and real humans would have practically zero chance of, uh, of getting a ticket, um, let alone, well, they would have a chance of getting a ticket, but they would have practically zero chance of winning. Um, and so we want to ensure not only that um, humans, are the people with faces are the only ones that get tickets, but also you can only get one ticket per person. Right, uh, let me see if there are any questions right now, then then um, let's uh, then feel free to ask them. Otherwise, we're going to jump into the code. I think, ah, great, there was a, that's, that's good. We've got the MetaMask thing set up. I think we're good to go. Um, so yeah, check out this code. I, I this is the same uh, as before. And then check out particularly step one the tag step one. That's the what we want if you, if you um, want to follow along. I'm going to show a quick summary of the smart contract side of things now. And then I'm going to hand over to Kevin to go through the front end. We're going to show the, we've got a kind of a, the lottery app is already created. And um, so we've got the contract here already in contracts. And we've got the front end app, a very rudimentary front end. You want to see how rudimentary it is? This is what it looks like. I don't do UIs. I'm sure you guys can come up with something better. I really hope you can. Um, otherwise, we're all doomed. Uh, so we're, I'll go through really quickly the code as it is without Civic integration. And then we're going to add Civic. So we're going to add Civic first to the front end so that you can get one of these uniqueness passes and scan your face and everything like that. And then we're going to show how you can protect the smart contract itself to make sure that only people with passes um, have, uh, are able to get a ticket. Hope that makes sense. Okay, cool. So in your IDE, hopefully you've navigated to lottery.sol. You can see that it's a nice small contract. It's only like 40 lines, 45 lines. And there are lots of things in it that I wouldn't do in production, by the way, that just wanted to keep the code simple. So when you create a new lottery contract, it registers the sender of the, of the transaction as the manager and managers are the ones who get to pick the winner. So there's this pick winner function down here, and it picks the winner randomly from the list of players. I wouldn't trust this random function in production either, by the way. Again, this is just for demo purposes, but it's sufficient for our use case. So yeah, how do you um, think? We were just seeing the the website at the minute. Ah, sorry, okay, I'll, I'm not sharing my screen properly. Thanks for telling me. Are we good now? Yep. Good night. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Let me just quickly say, repeat what I was saying again. So inside contracts, lottery.sol, um, you'll see the lottery contract nice and short. Um, when we call the constructor, it sets the manager, and then the manager can call this pick winner function, um, which find, which chooses a player randomly out of this list of players. And I say randomly, I mean pseudo randomly, um, again, don't copy this code for production. Um, right, how do you get to be in this players list where you call this get ticket function? Anyone can call this, um, but they can only call it once per wallet because we have this check here. You can only get one ticket per wallet. But this get one ticket per wallet is insufficient to protect against civil attacks because one person could spin up thousands of wallets and get a ticket for each of those wallets. And in fact, that's what you typically see bots doing um, uh, when you're um, for an, an NFT or something like that. So um, we're going to, um, well, we'll go through the UI first. So I'll hand over to, to Kevin and then we'll come back, swing back around to this to show you how to uh, add Civic to protect against, uh, against that. So yeah, Kevin, um, over to you to go through the UI. Oh, first of all, I'll just quickly show before I do that. Um, Hardhat config has the network set up, has um, XDC mainnet and XDC testnet. If you have a private key which has funds in XDC, then you can deploy um, a contract to XDC very easily here using yarn deploy testnet in this case. 
Uh, can you can you post the contract yeah, address? I will, post, I will yeah. send, send you the contract once I've deployed it. So this both this deployment script, which I've got here using Hard Hat Deploy, um, both deploys the, the lottery and funds it with some funds, um, XDC funds, not ETH as it says here. So anyone wants to play along, but doesn't have enough, uh, doesn't have testnet um, XTC, um, or we have the link as well for the for the faucet, but maybe somebody can post it because I don't have it to hand, but they can yeah. use either deploy their own one, or they can use this contract that I've just deployed. Okay, and with that, um, it's over to you, Kevin, thanks. Okay, thanks, Dan. Show my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, okay, this is the faucet that Dan mentioned. I'll just put it in the chat. Okay, all right, there's two, I think, yeah, I think I had trouble with the first one, but anyway, you can use either. So we're going to get started integrating uh, the front end. So first up, I'm going to just run what we currently have. So this is a basically at the start, at the end of step one. So the con smart contract's been deployed. So I'm going to, if we look at, we need this React app contract address, the thing that Dan just posted. So we're at the root level of the, the repo, if you want to follow along. And I find it's the contract here. And then I'm running yarn app start testnet. Okay, I can actually make my screen a little bigger. My text a little bigger to help zoom in. Okay. So it's running. Don't worry about these. This is basically you can get rid of these using generate source map equals false. Right? Okay. So this is the beautiful front end that Dan was talking about. Um, so here we have a lottery that anyone can enter and anyone can enter multiple times, which is not what we want. So if I look at my MetaMask, I've got a lot of test accounts like most devs do, and I could enter with each of those. So we want to prevent people from entering multiple times and just to reiterate, you require them to have a uniqueness pass before they can actually enter the lottery. So let's dive into the docs. I'll just post this here. This is specifically the front end docs. If you want to follow along from here. And this is not Solana, this is Ethereum, Polygon, etc. So I'm going to start off by installing the Civic Ethereum Gateway React component. So remember, this is in the, the app part of the repo. So there's two parts to the repo. So I'm just doing it so that uh, VS Code has got nice code completion, etc. I've opened two instances of VS Code. But here's the whole repo, and here's the app. And this is where I'm doing my changes here. So I'm going to do yarn add civic Ethereum Gateway React. And Okay, so it's added the React components, and now, okay, and go back to the docs. And our next thing we want to do is, we want to find a way to add information or add information to your DAP on whether the connected wallet has got a pass or not. And the way we do that, all the information we get is through this gateway provider. And once we've added it, I'll show you down here, we want to get this specifically the gateway status, which is linked to the wallet that's connected. So first of all, we go in, I'm just going to copy and paste this directly into our code. So I think the easiest thing is if we actually create a new, uh, a new class and call it civic pass for our context. So we'll provide a context that we can wrap or app in, and then it'll provide us with all the things we need so in here, I'm going to do export. Let's call this Civic Pass Provider. And remember, just shout if you don't understand what I'm doing, or if uh, you want me to slow down, or if you've got any questions. So this is going to be a, uh, a functional component with uh, props with children. So it's going to wrap. Uh, you're going to wrap code in it and pass in the children. Okay. So I think I need. 
this. Okay, sometimes autocomplete is a little overzealous. Um, so I want to just return the gateway provider and I want to, so the, the purpose of the context will be to fill in these values. So here I'm going to, okay, this actually comes, it's not doing the autocomplete for some reason. This comes from the civic Ethereum gateway react. Okay, it's all good. I can fill in these ones. This comes from React, I think. Did from React, okay. Now the wallet here is not my wallet, but it's it's a type of Ether's wallet. So the way we can get it now on Ether's wallet from we're using Rainbow Kit and Wagme, and Wagme provides handy way using a connector to do this. So I'm going to use the use account hook from Wagme. It's all imported it automatically. It's all good. And specifically, I'm going to okay. I'm going to first set up a little bit of local state here. So it's using a or sorry. So it's, I'm going to do. So this is going to be stored locally. Yeah. So this to be an Ether's wallet, which is going to be passed to the React component. And yeah. So every time. This is a React hook, and this comes from Ethers. Okay, so how do we actually set this wallet in order to use it? So we're going to use a use effect that, in essence, listens to any changes on the connector. So we put, it, put the connector as a dependency here. And then when the connect so if the connector so you can see this is smart enough to detect what i want to do so if there's no connector then don't do anything if there is a connector we don't want to get wallets that's wrong instead we want to get signer so signer is basically wagme's uh way of providing a, a means that that you for the the wallet sign and sign message and sign transaction functions etc so these will be used in the, the Civic React component to, to prove that the user owns the wallet and also to sign and send any, any transactions that we're creating. Okay, so the last part is the Gatekeeper network. And this is a string in this case. And I need the address of the Civic Pass address that we're interested in. So I'll post this here. Okay, so I'll just do a const. Uniqueness pass. Okay. So these uh, each pass has like a a, a key. That key yeah. you can get from the docs. Um, I'll send the link in a second. Uh, you have to kind of request it with, with um, and the uh, this is the one for the uniqueness pass starting. Uh, yeah. So uh, any questions at this stage? This is like, I haven't really interacted with the rest of the code yet. This is just creating a civic pass provider so that we can actually get access to the user's uh, on-chain status for the, for the connected wallet. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm monitoring the, the, the chat, so I think you can carry on, but maybe okay. I'll give a bit of background. So these passes, they're effectively like soul bound NFTs. So they're effectively NFTs that are sent uh, by us to the wallet. Um, and so this provider is basically um, providing the ability for your DAP to look up that wallet on chain on XDC and to see which of NFTs um, that the user has. And they're called soul bound because they're non-transferable. So you get them they're sent to you, but you can't send them out. So we're going to go into the app component and we're going to wrap everything in our civic pass provider so i need to import this from the file that i just created okay all very good okay so now we've got access to the civic pass provider just check everything's still compiling go to my lovely front end okay, everything's still providing but nothing's changed obviously so what do we actually want to do then we want to where, where before we had this button enter lottery we now want to disable this if the user 
until the user has an active civic pass. So what we can do is we can find this information out using, if you look in the docs, it's, we're going to do this part. So basically we're, we're using use gateway, use gateway as a hook from the civic gateway context. And we're going to specifically use it in, in here where the button is. So we've got, yeah, so we've got gateway here, but we've also got inside, uh, we've got a gateway status. And this is the thing we're interested in. So gateway status is the on-chain status for the user's wallet. And you see what kind of uh, object it is. So it's an enum with all these different statuses. And these are described in, in detail as well in our, in our documentation. But for now, the only one we're really interested in here is active. Basically, we, we, we want to get our things until this has gone active. So what we do is we would do a disables equals gateway status not equal to gateway status dot. So this email, I think we can import the type. Okay, so now we're disabled until we get an active token. We go back to our front end, just see what's happening. Okay, so I can't enter the lottery. Um, it's progress, but <laughs> we're not really there yet. So how do you actually allow the user to get one of these uniqueness passes? Well, luckily we have included in our uh, Ethereum Gateway React component, we have a button that can trigger the flow and show the status. So this is the, it's called the identity button. And you just add it like this. Can you take it? I'm not start picking up automatically. Again, it can just be directly imported from the React component. And let's go back to our front end so it's all compiling. And yeah, you see the button. So at the minute, it's just telling us that this is the kind of the, the default status. The user doesn't have any pass. So if I click on here, I start the actual flow. So this is what the user will experience. They go through the civic flow. So this is, again, as Dan described it before, we have a short video selfie to prove you're a unique individual. So go through here. First of all, as well, we have to verify that I actually control the wallet I'm connected with. So if so we we do offer a way to to uh change the wallet that's associated with your uniqueness pass however to stop people gaming the system and kind of continually doing this you've got a seven day cooling off period so that's what i'm agreeing to here and when i click on continue it's ask metamask is now asking me to sign a message i sign that and it allows me to go through so that signature was just saying Okay, I've proved now that I own that wallet by signing the message and there's a nonce embedded in the message to stop it being allowed to be reused over and over again. So I think for this step, I have to stop my video and I'm going to record my video selfie. So I open the full screen mode. So um, what's stored is a vector of your face. So what that means is the face is converted into like a, a, a position in a multi-dimensional vector space. You don't have to really worry about that. And what that means is basically your face is turned into like a dot, a point in that multi-dimensional mm -hmm. space. And then when somebody else um, scan, when when somebody else scans their face, then it's checked for similarity with all the other all the other points. Um, basically using a clustering algorithm and um, and that's uh, that's uh, how the uniqueness verification takes place Thanks, okay so the costs that I'm incurring here are 
the gas that I'm going to spend on XTC, it's very minimal. So it's asking me to, so this is actually requesting my uniqueness pass. I confirm. Wait, it takes a little minute for it to create my pass on chain. So the, the React, the Civic React component is listening. Okay, so my pass is active. And now I can enter the lottery. Hooray. So shall I actually enter it? Let's enter it. Okay. It's asking me to confirm. Confirm. Okay, I think the the UI is is yeah, I did, so I did not did, that we <laughs> I didn't add any refresh and you know, any of that yeah. those bells and whistles like that. <laughs> That's I'll left, leave that as an exercise. Yeah. So I think if I refresh okay, I have a ticket. Wonderful. Um let's just show you what we mean by this uniqueness as well. So at this point I can connect a different wallet. Okay, I'm going to go for this one, which is also funded with XTC. And now I'm going to try and enter the lottery. So, okay, fair enough. I'm going to go and try and get another uniqueness pass. But will I be allowed to, is the question. Second, let me enter the first one. So it's asking me to sign. Proved I own the wallet. Now again, I need to stop my video. So again, I'm doing a video selfie. So it's getting the vector from my face and it's comparing it to see if there's any existing bases in the database. Oh, and it's found a duplicate for the one that I just created. So it's so now we're, we're we've gated the the front end of the smart contract. So m one person can't fire up loads of different wallets and enter the lottery lots of different times. But this obviously is not the end of the story because if I was a script kitty, I would be immediately firing up my command line and creating a little script that would generate wallets, fund them with XDC and enter the lottery 100,000 times. So the next part of the demo is Dan showing us how we actually get the smart contract itself. So I think back to you, Dan. Thank you. Um, thanks, Kevin. Um, that was a good time to ask questions because I'm just going to get my IDE ready for the step three. Um, because I forgot to do that while we were talking. Uh, so yeah, if you have questions, either um, um, add them to the chat or on mute if that's possible. Okay, I think I'm good to go. Yeah, okay. So let me share my screen. Right. So that we're back in the smart contract. And as Kevin said, uh, oh, I didn't check if there were questions. <laughs> Maybe Kevin, you can do that. Um, as Kevin said, the smart, the, having the UI constraint is all well and good. And that we could think of that as basically making it easy for the user, um, specifically use, easy, easy for the user using your DAP to get go through whatever steps they need to go through in order to get the pass. So in this case, they need to go through a face scan. But um, the smart contract itself is still exposed. It's still um, insecure, and people could just bypass your UI. So, how do you secure the the smart contract? Well, there's a library for that too. Um, we're using Hard Hat right now, so this is the Hard Hat way of doing it. If you're using something like Fat Foundry or something else like that, then there are slightly different ways. Get in touch with us in the Discord for that. But Go head over to this um, here, on-chain integration. Um, let me just throw that in the chat, actually. Okay. And install this library here. This library contains the smart contract 
um, dependencies that you're going to be adding to your contract. And make sure you're not adding it inside the app folder. We're adding it at the top level. Am I doing that? Yes, I am. Um, yeah, I don't want to use MPN because I'm using Yarn. So Yarn add. Gateway protocol ETH. If you're wondering what identity.com is, by the way, um, identity.com is sort of like our sister company at Civic. All the open source software or practically all the open source software and the protocols and so on are decentralized. There's no authorities and so on, on that and they're all managed by identity.com. So this gateway protocol is the smart contract protocol that is that Civic Pass is based on top of. But, and we won't go into that in this, in this call, but um, feel free to ask us about it. It is in fact possible for you to create your own passes using this protocol. Like I said, it's, um, it's uh, decentralized in nature. Okay, so we're going to import that now. Identity.com gateway protocol ETH. And we want contracts gated.sol. GitHub Copilot is making things very easy for me. This gated um, contract is something you can your contract can inherit. So it is gated. And then what it does, it, it needs two things. It needs the um, gateway token contract and it needs uh, the, so we'll say address gateway token contract, which I will root out of the docs in a second. And it needs 256, the gatekeeper network. Leave it there for a moment. The gatekeeper network is basically the same as the one that we put in the front end that was that key beginning with UNIQ, but in on chain, it's an actual index, it's an ID. Um, so we'll put that into the deployment script in a moment. So yeah, we just passed those two to the, the constructor of the gated contract. Set. Um, let uh, Copilot do it for me. Okay. Right, so now we've set up that this lottery is gated, but what we haven't done yet is specify what functions need to be gated. In this case, the only function that we're going to gate or the only function that we're going to uh, require a user to have a pass for is the get ticket function. So we're going to say, in order to call this function, this method, um, the caller has to be has to be in possession of a pass um, under this gatekeeper network. I should probably describe the term gatekeeper network for a second. You can think of it basically the same as a pass type. So the uniqueness pass is gatekeeper network um, uh, with the UNIQ at the start. Um, the, the capture pass that we mentioned at the start is a different gatekeeper network and so on. And the reason it's called a gatekeeper network is because there can be multiple gatekeepers or issuers of these passes um, under that particular um, pass type. Um, so that's what that means. You can just think of it as equivalent to gate to pass. And likewise, the term gateway token is synonymous with, uh, sorry, this is synonymous with pass type and gateway token is synonymous with pass. Okay, so to gate this get ticket function, all you need to do is add gated modifier. And that's it. So this is checking that the message sender has a pass in this gatekeeper network. We can look into the code here, see what gated does. Um, as you can see, just looking in the gateway token contract, and then it called verify token to see if the sender um, has a pass in this gatekeeper network. Nice and simple. Um, yeah, so altogether the integration on the smart contract side is just these lines, one, two, three, and four. Um, Kevin, do you feel like doing a, uh, or I think, I guess we've, we've probably done the demo, there's no point repeating it. From the, from the side of the front end, this won't look any different um, because it will, because the front end is already constraining you from being able to click the button unless you have a pass anyway. But adding these now protects you against uh, uh, scripts and so on. Um, so yeah, that's actually it. Um, that's the entire demo. Um, do yeah, does anybody have any questions? I'll say from a dev perspective, it looks pretty seamless and, and easy to integrate. Uh, excited to see what, what people come up with. 
Yeah, me too. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, there's lots of so we've this is the simplest integration. If it's too constrained for you, if there's if like we don't insist that you use, for example, the identity button. If that doesn't fit your UI, you can skin it. You can build your own one. You can add it at any point of the of the of the flow on the front end as you like. Uh, likewise, if this uh, this modifier here is too constrained for you, too constrained for you, for example, you might. This is an important point. Remember, we can we said that people can revoke their passes on one face and one one wallet and add them to another wallet. So you might want to check when you pick the winner that the player that you pick still has a pass, right? In that case, gated doesn't work. Gated here would only constrain that the sender has a pass, which is not what you want. So then you can basically go in and use um, the uh, I get the I gateway token verifier yourself. So you can. Um, you can use that interface, point it to the gateway token contract, and then call verify token. So the actual logic there would look more like this. Um, and then you would put in the winner here. And then some error here. And then you just have to get that gateway, store that gateway token contract in your own state. So there's a few places where you can um, uh, be more flexible, but we wanted to make the default as easy as possible to integrate. Oh, and there's one thing I forgot that that just reminded me of. Let's say you need to actually have the gateway token contract and the gatekeeper network. Um, in our little demo, we set this up in this deploy lottery script, right, from Hard Hat Deploy. So you need to pass those in as, as constructor arguments there. Let's just do that quickly. The first one is from the, the dots. You scroll down here, you'll see it here. That's the, the contract in, in XDC, Apothem, and in mainnet. So just throw that in there. And then the uniqueness pass, like I said, is uh, pass type is an ID. You get that when you go through this step here where you um, request the pass. But for the purpose of the demo, just very quickly, this is num ID number 10 for uniqueness. So then we can do, if I just quickly remove my old deployment here, then I should be able to go yarn deploy testnet. That should all compile fine. That's really cool. Uh, can you talk about some of the major uh, applications where you see this being used? I mean, you talk about lottery, but uh, you also mentioned minting NFTs. Uh, could it be used for like entering a DeFi trading app or, but you know, can you just touch on, on that topic real quick? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jonathan. So um, NFT mints is a good example. We have had lots of mints using the capture for bot resistance, for example. We've got a mint coming up soon, not on XDC, um, that is using this exact pass, this uniqueness pass, um, because I think it's a free mint, and it's to ensure again that only that one person gets one uh, one NFT. Um, DeFi applications, yes, especially around K uh, around KYC. So there is um, there's a lot of talk right about regulations coming into DeFi and um, a lot of institutional investors and um, and banks and so on are either unable to either afraid to or literally unable to interact with DeFi right now because there's no KYC. Um, you want to have a system that respects the boundaries and respects the principles of, of DeFi without uh, while still providing that security that you're, for example, not trading with people on sanctions lists, you're not trading with people from known terrorist lists or something like that. And so um, we have uh, worked with, uh, with organizations in the past to set up permission markets indexes. So these are markets where you need to go to a gatekeeper first to go through KYC, um, and, then, and then you're allowed to, to, to transact on the DEX. And the way to make that as flexible as possible and respect the boundaries of, uh, of DeFi is through this um, gateway protocol, Civic Pass, which has which leads to a, uh, a separation of the people doing the KYC and the operators of the DEX. You don't have to um, fall back to centralized exchanges, which is the way this works right now. So we really think that this sort of model opens up. First of all, it protects DeFi from, from regulators and we're talking with a lot of organizations and regulators right now to be kind of future ready in that regard. But also it um, 
it is uh, it, it allows for institutional money and uh, and to come into the space in a way that has never been really possible before. Um, finally, one other interesting use case um, is uh, DAOs. That at the moment DAOs are, um, that have kind of token-based voting systems, um, or in other words, on-chain voting, are kind of limited to uh, you know the person with the most tokens having the most votes. Um, you can obviously have lots of off-chain Web2 sort of constraints, you know, connect your Twitter, make sure that you're a real person, then you're not getting multiple, uh, multiple uh, um, governance tokens. But to have a truly Web3 version requires some protection against civil resistance, uh, civil attack. And this is where the uniqueness pass comes in. And so we're integrating in on some of the chains with, with DAO platforms um, for this as well. And once you have that in place, you can do some really interesting things with your voting system. So you, instead of, again, just having um, richest wins, you can start to have things like one person, one vote in the other extreme, or something in the middle between richest wins and one person, one vote, like um, quadratic voting and that sort of thing. Um, and quadratic voting is very similar to quadratic funding, which is a, which is a funding mechanism again, which kind of um, allows people to uh, uh, vote on the project that they want to fund, and um, the and that gets matched with a matching pool, usually. So the project with the most votes gets the largest percentage of a, a matching pool of donations. And obviously, that's also very easy to manipulate if you don't have any kind of civil resistance. So we're working with organizations to uh, to integrate that as well on a number of chains. So that, that's just a, a taster. I'm sure um, I'm sure that the candidates can think of other ones, and we're very excited to hear and see them. Awesome. There is another question about uh, can Civic be used to limit viewers of an IPFS document to only those assigned the ticket or token? Uh, that's interesting. So theoretically, yes, although you have to be aware of the constraints of the system. So IPFS itself is completely open. Anyone with the link can access it. Um, you might want to encrypt it uh, so that only certain people can decrypt. But then the uh, the pass uh, might give you permission to de to get the decryption key, but that decryption key shouldn't be on chain or on IPFS because then other people will be able to get it as well. So there are some constraints there, but yeah, there are token based um, access methods being built. Um, I don't know of any right now using Civic Pass, so that's a very interesting uh, hackathon project. It, you, I think there's a niche there. Um, the cool thing about Civic Pass is that it's um, it's soul bound, so you can associate it with an individual and you know they're not going to sell it away. So that may or may not be useful for this use case. Kevin, did I leave anything out or did you want to add anything? No, that's good. Um, the. Yeah, I think we've touched upon revoking your uniqueness pass and there's a, a portal link for that if you want to. But again, there's a constraint of the seven day thing. I'll just post it in case people are interested. Where you scan your face and you see what uniqueness tokens are associated in different networks. Yeah, exactly. Um, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. On DevNet, we have a we have a little bit more flexibility than on mainnet. On TefNet, we have a little bit more flexibility than on date on mainnet. I mean, so on App with them, um, what we can do if you if you guys are testing and you're using uniqueness pass, and it's starting to be, you know, it's coming to crunch time in the hackathon, and you don't want to wait the seven days to switch wallets. You need to switch wallets for whatever reason. Um, we can help you out. Uh, on testnet on app with them um so give us a shout on the discord and we'll see what we can do yeah well that's great thank you uh so much for the demonstration i'm uh, very helpful yeah no problem thanks very much for having us it's really great to be uh to be collaborating with xdc on this hackathon and we're really excited to see what everybody comes up with